Guys, the fight of the night was short-lived, but boy, was it fun while it happened. Vicente Luque darsed Tyron Woodley in his first ever submission loss. Nick and I are talking about that amazing fight right now. What's up, Barnhill family? Welcome back to the channel. Yo, yo. So Nick, uh, unfortunately for T-Wood, he's now 0-4 in his last four, capping yeah. it off with a for his first ever submission loss. Mm. Uh, so really not great times right now for T-Wood. But before we get to that, how about Vicente Luque? Yeah. Absolutely, uh, you know, doing a very good job of staying composed in the firefight. Tyron had his back against the wall. From the opening bell, he came out fighting as such. Mm -hmm. Luque did an extremely good job of, of being aware, being calculated, being patient, getting off of the fence when Tyron kind of had him in those uh, double unders there and, 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 and really staying patient, calculated, landing great shots, and ultimately getting T. Wood to the ground and finishing him by submission T. Wood's never been finished by submission before. How good did Vicente Luque look? He looked incredible. And, you know, the term, the dark horse of the division, kind of gets thrown around a little bit too much, in my opinion, because there's usually several dark horses, people that don't get the respect or the shine that they may deserve, that are tearing through everybody in the division. And they're somewhere lumped in between that 6 through 15 ranking. And, yeah. and they're not really getting the shine that they need to, to jump into the top five. But they're monsters, and nobody at the top five really wants to fight them. Vicente Luque is exactly one of those guys. At 170, he might be the darkest horse yeah. of all the dark horses. So uh, to see him go out there and, and do what he did to the former champion that Kamaru Usman couldn't finish, and you know, went all five rounds. With Took him. Colby a longer time to finish him. Colby, yeah, yeah. Gilbert Burns, yeah. all these guys were, you know, had a tough, tough night out uh, with T. Wood, much tougher than Vicente Luque. And I will say that um, props to T. Wood. Tyron Woodley came out there and didn't give us one of those matches that a lot of fans, a lot of casuals consider to be very boring. Uh, what got him to the dance, what got him to the title was holding people down against their will, beating them up, and kind of getting these decisions that were so uh, – they, they were so um, – uh, overwhelming for their opponents that nobody was really like even interested in seeing him rematch other people because he was just beating them in a way that was like, okay, we get this guy's better, but he's not entertaining us. You know, that's right. how a lot of people looked at T wood. He came out, you know, throwing everything, throwing heavy leather at yeah. Vicente Luque, one of the best kickboxers in the entire uh, welterweight division, or maybe even the sport. And uh, it, it happened to, to not work for him. He got cracked. It shows how strong he was, how strong yeah. he is his chin. He was wobbling several times, but uh, it was very crafty and very smart of Vicente Luque to go to what he knows best uh, and go to his his arsenal, find a darse choke out there, and uh, and, and get the job done. That's a, a big feather in his cap. Absolutely. I mean, anybody that taps T Wood out, I mean, my goodness, yeah. that's like a, a he's in a league a, of his a own. dream of a welterweight to fight T Wood and yeah. win by submission. Uh, you know, Tyron Woodley, uh, he's not known, as you said, for being that guy that just starts the fight right out of the gate, just throwing bombs. He had his back against the wall. He's 0-3. He's had his open public spats with Dana and the mm -hmm. UFC before. So this was the last fight on his contract. And he said, you know what? I'm going out with a bang, win or lose. And yeah. he put on a great show for us. He got himself, he made himself $50,000 richer last night. Unfortunately for him, he didn't get the win. But my goodness, I mean, as soon as that opening bell rang, rang I almost missed the first like couple seconds of the fight because we were talking and then we heard a bunch of people in the room go, oh, wow, wow, wow. Mm -hmm. So I looked at the screen and said, oh my goodness, like T-Wood is throwing leather. Yeah. This is unbelievable. And I said, he might actually knock Luke out. He, he looks like a man on a mission fighting for his contract as he very much was last night. You know, unfortunately for him, he Luque was able to stay composed. But there's a lot of welterweights, even in the top 10 right now, that could have eaten a shot that went to sleep. So, right. you know, Woodley, the reality is at almost 39 years old, he can't fight like that every fight. He's no. If he's going to continue, I, I don't. I think he's pretty much done in the UFC. Uh, Dana White at the press conference last night, they or the yeah, post-fight press conference, they asked him, you know, do you think Tyron Woodley should retire? That was the last fight on his UFC contract. And Dana kind of looked to one of his employees and said, how old is Tyron again? And they said, oh, he's almost 39. So oh, almost 39. He's 0-4. You know, he's been finished a couple of times now. And he goes, yeah, I think it's yeah, probably time for Tyron to hang things up. So it, it seems like the UFC and Tyron Woodley are done doing business, at least as t with Tyron as a, as a fighter in the UFC. Uh, but then the question becomes, 
Tyron Woodley obviously is probably in the top 15 welterweights in the world right now. If you categorize all organizations together and rank everybody, maybe even top 10. So do you think Woodley can and should continue to fight if Bellator or one championship or another organization picks him up? I do. I think Tyron Woodley still has a few more fights left in him. If anybody uh, can fight past that or on the other side of 40 it's tyron woodley he looks like a million bucks still and he's only you know he might be 38 or i guess about to turn about to turn 39 yeah yeah so if there's other people that are doing it tyron certainly deserves to do it as well and i don't want this to sound like i'm uh interested in seeing tyron put his health on the line but if tyron comes out and fights like that for the for the duration of his um career He's going to gain a lot of those fans that maybe he missed the opportunity with yeah. uh, in the previous years. If he comes out, you know, he's one of the most explosive fighters the world's ever seen. And if he can come out there and do what he was doing against Luke and give exciting fights to, you know, the UFC or Bellator or any of these other uh, organizations, he's going to uh, be a big draw for them. He's going to, you know, bring some eyes to their sport or to their show. And it's just something where you don't want to see somebody like that that still has that kind of fire in them. And, you know, it kind of seemed like the fire was gone for a little while. But last night he showed it was very much still inside him. He had the the eye of the tiger and stuff. And I, I just don't want to see somebody who was able to get fight of the night bonus money to retire immediately after that. I think there, if you don't go from having the fight of the night on a UFC pay-per-view, one of the biggest pay-per-views of the year so far, to being retired and not fighting anymore. So I would like to see Tyron fight some more. That's a good point. But it's like a catch-22, right? Because at almost 40 years old, you can't go get in firefights every fight, especially when you've been in there with some of the best people in the world. So it's kind of like, I think if Tyron wants to continue fighting, as Chael Sonnen said in the post-fight show last night, he's going to have to go back to what brought him to the dance, which is his superior wrestling, top five in the country when he was in college. Uh, you know, the, the superior grappling and strength and, and the ground and pound. And then the, the uh, obviously the negative side to that coin is it's not the most exciting thing. And that's been the criticism of Tyron over his career. So maybe Tyron finds a balance between the Tyron that we saw last night, the uh, horse fresh out of the gate of the mm-hmm. Kentucky Derby sprinting to the finish line and the Tyron of old. Yeah. Who knows? Um, I'm not one to call for people to retire um, at, at a certain age. I think everybody's different. I think everybody takes care of their body differently. And I think everybody has a unique story and a unique um, yeah opportunity and and i think that tyron woodley will make the best decision for himself unfortunately i don't think it's going to be in the ufc i don't think he'll be offered another contract by the way that i heard dana phrase it last night yeah it didn't seem super uh hopeful or optimistic for for tyron woodley to continue in the ufc but uh, any organization that can get a hold of him should pay him well pay him what he deserves and give him some good fights because i know he will definitely bring some new eyes and some some eyes that maybe weren't on him on their organizations to their organization, and uh, it's just not time for T Wood to to hang it up just yet. But you know you got to kind of turn turn the tides over to the young hungry lions and Vicente. As one goes out, one comes in. Right, so. Vicente Luque is certainly uh, one of the the next of the next gen- one of the guys in the next generation of 170. He's going to be a name we're talking about for the next several years. And I believe deserves a, a top five, top six, top seven type of fighter next. And I think he called out Nate Diaz. And, and I did and, see that in the post fight press yeah. conference. So he was number ten going into the fight. Yeah, T Wood was number seven. Presumably he takes T Wood's yeah. spot. Maybe maybe he falls at eight, just depending on how things shake out. So I agree. I think a top five is in order next. The yeah. Nate. I don't think Nate Diaz is coming out for it's Vicente always, Luque. It's That's, always a miss. Unfortunately, yeah. Vicente Luque. We know him as fighters. People that are really deep in the sport know who Vicente Luque is. The casuals don't really know who that is. No. Unfortunately, and. Uh, Nate it's, Diaz it's, probably doesn't even know who Vicente a, Luque is. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So uh, Nate Diaz, that's not going to get him out of bed. You're, Vicente Luque will not be in a cage with Nate Diaz uh, at a minimum of five years, uh, over the next five years. Yeah. It's just not going to happen. Unless your name's Jorge Masvidal, Conor McGregor, or, you know, Habib or George St. Pierre, you're not fighting Nate Diaz right. pretty much. So I don't think you, you should waste your call out on that. I think, you know, he should be saying, you know, I'd love to – reintroduce Hamzat Shemaev into the 170 division right. when he's ready. If he's ready in July, I'll be ready. I only just, I was in one round of a fight. I'll be ready then. That's an, a 
How about this one? How about because Leon Edwards is looking for a dance partner? Yeah. He's saying that he's too good for uh, a rematch with Bilal Muhammad. He deserves an immediate title shot. I don't particularly agree with that. I think that after almost a two-year layoff, you need to come in and do more than get a no contest yeah. in order to get a title fight. Why don't you go beat Vicente Luque? I, yeah. I would love to see Leon versus Vicente Luque. That, that's a perfect fight to make. And, you know, he did say oh, Bilal Muhammad was a top 15 or he's not really in my category. I appreciate him coming on short notice and taking the fight against me so I could, you know, could I go to work. But um, he wasn't really in my wheelhouse of f potential opponents. Right. And we would. Under it was no, a throw together. So, yeah, yeah. Under no circumstances would we have usually fought. And that was like the last thing we anybody was thinking about. But, you know, he did do it. And so the fact that people are asking for a rematch is a little bit strange, but I get it. I'm one of those people that thinks Bilal Muhammad has done enough uh, heavy lifting to, you know, warrant yeah. a rematch. But if that's not the direction they're going and Bilal's got some business with potentially Kevin Holland or some other people, then Vicente Luque, Vicente Luque should certainly be somebody that they're looking at to give to Leon Edwards. I mean, I think they're both able to turn around pretty quickly. Right. And we could see them fight in early summer and, and give us a really great shot. And we that could be one of the uh, potential top t top contender fights uh at 170 yeah well that would also dial it in uh as far as time goes with mm -hmm. the masvidal usman fight right because you know that's going to happen next month now in jacksonville so you could have that and then you know next month or two months later you do uh leon versus luke and or if then, they're down put it up put it on that card in case yeah, in case anything happens because neither one of them took any any damage really yeah. unfortunately balal's eye was the only thing that really took any damage in that fight and then last night luke did a great job of mitigating the the strikes from Woodley and, yeah. and getting him out of there early. So I think that those guys could turn around and fight next week, hypothetically. Right. So, you know, make that make that on the same fight. I would love, love, yeah. love to see that. COVID always likes to rear its head when there's a title on the line or some fight we really want to well, see. Well, there you go, yeah. And, and, and you know, if, if Leon and, and Vicente Luque are right there as the B the B roll fight and one of these guys has to back out for whatever reason then the, the Leon I'm sure there, Leon yeah. would be the one that would get the nod but rightfully so probably know, yeah but it, you know crazier things have happened and and th they would have two um uh two opponents that are both qualified to fight for the title against Usman yeah, interesting times. And yeah. I mean, let, let's just talk about the specific performance of Luke a bit yeah. last night. I mean, really, really uh, the composure. When, when I think of that performance, composure is what comes to mind yeah. because he had one of the scariest guys that 170 has ever seen fighting him in a way that no one has ever seen. Yeah. No one's ever seen T. Wood fight like that. And you have a, a guy who's known for tremendous power trying to use it on you sub one second of the fight like yeah. literally as much time as it took for him to run to the other side of the cage and yeah. meet in the middle so i mean you, you had a, a tremendous composure and then luke very calm very patient he got off the cage he he threw some kicks he went low then he went high uh you know rocked rock t wood t wood was literally you know i mean my goodness he was really fighting for, with every ounce of of, of spirit that to he stay had on last his two night, feet, you know? he was almost unconscious, and his body was trying to shut down, and he wouldn't. His brain was just but then he, overriding. But just, then he was throwing back shots, and I'm yeah. like, I, I don't want to see him take any more heavy shots. But he's also throwing shots, and some of them are landing. So you know, that's why the referee has the hardest job in the entire. Uh, uh, that was a true mental fighting. override. Just yeah. like I am going to will myself to victory. Yeah. Unfortunately for him, it wasn't enough. But you know. It, and the Luke was very patient. He rocked him. He, Tyron almost went running across the cage, I think, really to just try to keep his balance mm -hmm. because he had been rocked so bad. And uh, Luke was able to, to, not or to, to notice that Dars opportunity on the ground. And rather than kind of spazzing out and ending up in a bad position or gassing himself out, he said, OK, you know what? I can be calculated here. I have a very hurt opponent who's on the ground. I've got great submission skills. I'm going to mm -hmm. finish this fight that way. I think it was tremendous awareness. It was tremendous composure. And I think that uh, he absolutely, as you said, deserves a top five next. Yeah, and the, the $100,000 split between the two of them as the fight of the night uh, bonus was absolutely the right choice. Yeah. And it shows you just how great of a fight it was 
because it was so short. Almost every time we see a fight of the night, it's a, a three round or five round to the distance type of thing that really, you know, everybody's getting their shots off back and forth. When yeah. you have two, two or three minutes of just insanity, you got to give those guys the bonus. And that's exactly what Dana saw. He loved it. And uh, those guys certainly earned that yeah. fight of the night that ends in a first round finish is <laughs> for the time yeah. that it lasts. It's a wild one. Absolutely. So. Well, guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Were you guys as impressed with Luke's performance as we were? And what do you think T. Wood should do next? Is it time for the chosen one to hang up the gloves? Or does he still have a little fight left in him, as evidenced by that performance last night? As always, let us know in the comments. We love engaging and debating with you guys there, so keep them coming. Also, guys, we're on audio where you listen to podcasts. We'd love for you to check us out and subscribe there as well. And thanks so much. Please like, comment, and subscribe on this video and check us out in the next one. Have a great day, guys. Peace.